This week, I am gonna make Alton Brown's serious vanilla ice cream. We'll break it down into numbers and see if it's any good. So last week, the breast milk ice cream, it didn't do too bad considering how controversial it actually was, but you know, it, it's nice to do something different sometimes. But today's video is Alton Brown's serious vanilla ice cream. Um, I'm gonna make it exactly as the recipe online says. We're gonna look at the result and see if we can improve it in any way, shape or form. What we've got here, according to the recipe, and I will put a picture on the screen of the recipe that we're working from, 150 grams of sugar separated into 100 grams and 50 grams. 60 grams of water, 15 grams of liquid pectin, 480 grams of half and half, which is 10% fat for those people outside North America, 245 grams of heavy cream, which is 34 to 36% fat, depending on where in North America you are, and 40 grams of vanilla bean paste. And finally, it's 0.1 teaspoons of salt, so a pinch of salt. And this is, I'm using sea salt, don't use table salt, it's got other stuff in it as well. So for those in Europe, etc., you can you make 10% fat cream by using something like single cream and just topping it up with water. So we just need to reduce that fat down a little bit. As, and you can do the same for the cream in this recipe. So this uses the heavy cream, 34, 36%. If you're using like double cream, which is 50%, then just add water to bring it up to 36% fat and then decant off how much you need. To be fair, I've looked at the numbers already for this recipe and I think it could probably do with a little bit of adjustment anyway. So we'll talk about that later. So according to the directions, we have to take our 50 grams of sugar, which is this, in a small saucepan with our 60 grams of water and get that to a boil. So let's do that. Once that sugar water comes to a boil, we need to add our 15 grams of pectin and then bring it back to a rolling boil for one minute and then remove it from the heat. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back. All right, we're up to a boil. We're gonna add in our 15 grams of liquid pectin. Get it back on the heat. And it says we need to boil that for one minute. So let's do that. Right, there is our one minute. It says exactly one minute. That's really precise. Remove from heat and leave a room temperature to cool for 25 minutes. So let's just leave that there. 25 minutes time. Look, it's quarter to 10, give or take one minute. So 10 past 10. Temperature should, it says temperature should land about 89 Fahrenheit. So let's make sure we do everything correctly. I need to change to Fahrenheit, there we go, Fahrenheit. What are we at now? We're at 167 Fahrenheit. So we've got a ways to come down yet. So the next stage, while the, pectin, while the pectin mixture cools, combine the remaining half a cup of sugar with the half and half, with our half and half, and our cream, which is here. Make sure we get all of this stuff out. One tablespoon, which says 20 grams, I'm not sure that's right, but I know that is pretty much 15 grams. So I'm going to add that remaining five grams in like that. Let's make sure that all goes in there. And the salt. I mean, it's 0 0.1 teaspoons. So like that. Not a lot of salt going into this. And it says we need to heat it up to 185F and then remove it and steep it for 20 minutes. So that will all tie in with this. So let's get this on the heat. So we've got our pectin here. I'm just swirling this around gently because it will stick to the sides. It will create like a sticky, gloopy layer on the outside edge of your saucepan if you don't do this. So just agitate it for you know a few times during this cooling phase. Let's clear up. And once this is up to 185F, we'll get it on here. There we go. 185F, off the heat it comes. It says to cover and steep for 20 minutes. I don't have a lid for this saucepan, so we're gonna, we're gonna cover it with foil. Obviously we're covering a really hot liquid, so that's gonna condensate on the underside of this, or lid as well. So when you remove it, try not to drip all that water back in to the mixture. 
So 20 minutes. This I've got about 15 minutes to wait, so I'll come back when that time has passed. All right, so our pectin needs to be down to, what did he say, 89 Fahrenheit, 84. We've got our bowl here for storing. Let's get this out. Lots of water. Try to keep that out of the way there. So let's get a little whisk. It says to thoroughly stir our pectin mixture. So let's stir that. And our pectin mixture is going into our dairy mixture. Stir this up. And then we need to add in our remaining 20 grams of our vanilla bean paste. We need to cool it down to room temperature using an ice bath. Ice bath, in this goes. And we're gonna stir this now until this comes down to room temperature. So I'm gonna keep stirring this until we come down to room temperature. Really didn't take very long, so Get it out of there. Get rid of this. Transfer, it says transfer to uh, an airtight container and chill in the fridge for six to 24 hours. So that's quite a broad time scale, but essentially what we're, what we're trying to do is just bring this down to fridge temperature and that additional time will allow that vanilla flavor to mature. So with that in mind, in the fridge that goes. And I'll do a full 24 hours, give or take. So we'll come back tomorrow morning and churn this puppy up. So the recipe says to split the sugar for the pectin with the water, heat the dairy to 185F, then steep for 20 minutes, and then again for six to 24 hours. Now in reality, the initial sugar is only there to activate the pectin and the water is just there to stop it burning. The 185F dairy heating just dissolves the fats and sets the pace for the pectin integration and the 20 minute steep totally useless the overnight chill does all of this work still the recipe is missing something big to be truly serious though also by denaturing the proteins by heating up to 185f that's just not enough to give this ice cream the texture and mouthfeel that it really deserves with a name like it's got okay alton brown's serious vanilla ice cream uh relatively easy to make um a couple of things i'd do different but it smells good Oh, cold. It's got a great taste. There's no choice about it. It's just one thing. It's lacking so many solids. It's down in the 31 to 32% solids, which is why it's so cold. You know what it's like when you, you take some ice cream and you put it in your mouth. It, when you compare one version of ice cream to another, and one is really cold and one is, you know, normal ice cream. The one that is really cold is always low in solids. And that's what we got here. It, it's almost 10% too low in solids. And for those people that have been here long enough, the one ingredient that is missing from this recipe is skim milk powder or low fat milk powder or zero fat milk powder, whatever it's called where you're from. That is the thing missing from this. It's a delicious ice cream, really nice, uses pectin. It's an unusual stabilizer for ice cream, but it's decent, but it needs those extra solids from somewhere. It has a minus 10 centigrade serving temperature, which is for me personally, you know, a little bit high, which means it's got to come out of the freezer for, a, you know, five or 10 minutes to warm up before you can scoop it. So you that would be resolved with that skim milk powder as well. The lactose in the milk powder would help bring that serving temperature back around to where we want it to be, but it's a good ice cream, absolutely. For those people that have never made it, give it a bash and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Next week, I'm gonna do a Ben and Jerry's remake because I haven't done one of those in a while. So stick around and I'll see you then.